Welcome to Vintage Weights PGH. My name is Rob, and you've probably seen me clean some old rusty weights up. But in this updated oxalic acid video, I'm going to show you all of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to take the rust off of your weight plates or your dumbbells and reveal the original paint. Let's start out with the materials that you're going to need. Oxalic acid can be purchased in powder form. I like to buy the Florida Laboratories brand oxalic acid. I purchase it on Amazon. This is a 10 pound bag, and unless you're going to do this over and over and over again, you probably don't need this much. You could probably get away with like a two pound bag, and that would be enough for a sizable project for three, four, 500 pounds of weights. In addition to the oxalic acid, you're gonna need a tub, a bin, something to put it in to then create the solution with water. I find that a storage bin like this one that comes with a lid is usually enough to fit most of the weights that I want to clean up. Some people like to use different vessels, different bins. A storage bin like that one, a plastic one, I find for pretty cheap at the dollar store or at your local hardware store. Thanks to Eric Stanick, who I learned the basic oxalic acid process from, he developed a three tablespoons to one gallon of water ratio. Now it's not an exact science. A little more, a little less isn't going to cause any kind of catastrophe. So don't be too stressed out about it. But for example, for my tub over here, I know that about two cups will be the right amount of oxalic acid powder. Other materials that you're going to need will be safety gear. I suggest using safety glasses, Maybe even a mask if you prefer, but if not anything else, definitely have some good safety gloves. So that the gloves don't get flooded with water, I really like these longer ones. These are available for purchase through the link in the description as well as on my website. And of course, as an affiliate link, it earns a little bit of money for my account. So if you're enjoying this video, you can support the account by buying your supplies through the links in the description, as well as subscribing and liking and commenting and all that happy stuff. But in the meantime, these have held up, as you can see, they're quite dirty through many, many projects. I've had this particular pair for over six months now. So get yourself some gloves. Next up, you're going to need brushes. You definitely want a good nylon brush. I just buy these Amazon basic ones and they hold up pretty well. I like the handle grip on them. They come in a pack of two. That's convenient because I use one of the nylon brushes for scrubbing in the oxalic acid bath, and I use the other brush for three-in-one oil, which comes last. But before we get to the three-in-one oil, I also like this brass brush in particular. It's made by a company called Forney, F-O-R-N-E-Y. There's a link in the description, and you can see the bristles are longer. That makes it really convenient for getting into the crevices and corners of weight plates and dumbbells. Other materials you might need. If you're doing weight plates, these little painter's triangles are really helpful. I learned these from a fellow collector. You know who you are. Thank you. I use these to space out the plates so that the solution gets in and out of them if I'm doing a whole bunch of plates lined up in my bin. So let's walk through the process and let's get down to doing this project. I'm pointing down because the weights are down here. Let's see what we're cleaning up this weekend. This is probably the worst condition weight that'll be going into the oxalic acid bath. The 20 pound buns are in pretty good condition. The one on the right needs attention the most. The 25 pound buns are in about the same and should turn out well from the oxalic acid bath. And the 40 pound single bun is probably the worst out of the dumbbells. And from my previous experience, should turn out well from the oxalic acid bath. We should be able to knock off all of this rust and just reveal the original black paint. Safety gloves on to ensure that 
the oxalic acid mixes well with the water. I like to put half of it in first. It's just a white powder. It does get kind of clumped, so you might want to break it up a little bit. I try to break up the clumps. That way it mixes a lot more evenly. Then I arrange my weights. It does take some arranging to figure out the best way to get the greatest amount of exposure of surface area. Wow, that sounded very scientific. Basically, make sure the weights get touched by the solution, the oxalic acid solution, as much as possible. Then we're going to add water. I should mention, I like to put it on high blast so that I really break up the rest of the oxalic acid and get it mixed. So now that I added the second cup of oxalic acid, I'm trying to break it up and you'll see that I reach in with my hand to try to break it up as well. So now we need to think about safety when it comes to letting them soak. You need to be wary of small children getting into the tub, not just for the oxalic acid, but also with the hazard of drowning, things of that nature. You also need to be wary of pets getting into this. Big shout out to the No Wine Cellar for bringing that to my attention. I don't really have pets that would get in here, but he had asked and it was a good thing to think about. Now, when it comes to the timing of things, you're going to want to wait every eight to 10 hours. You can get away with six hours, sometimes depending on the weights, to scrub. And you're going to scrub with a nylon brush first. I usually like to start the oxalic acid bath first thing in the morning or right before I go to bed. That way, in the case of this bath, I'm about to go to bed, the oxalic acid is doing the work while I'm sleeping. So I'll see you in the morning for the first round of scrubbing. I've had a good night's sleep, miraculously. None of my children woke me up. <laughs> Parents out there with small children, you know what I'm talking about. But that's the beauty of oxalic acid and a project like this, if you are a parent or just a busy person, is that this is the type of project that you come in, you do a little work for about five, 10 minutes, and then you go about everyday life. So the five to 10 minutes we're gonna spend this morning is the first round of scrubbing. So what I like to do is get the lid next to it. I also have a bunch of old towels and I like to put down an old towel below the lid and then I put down an old towel next to it just in case there are any that are ready for baking soda and ready to move on and not go back in the bath. I'll show you what I mean as we go through this. I've got both of my brushes ready to go as well. My brass brush and my nylon brush. At this stage, the first round of scrubbing, I'm primarily using my nylon brush because as you'll see in a moment, it works wonders. Let's take a look right now at what's in the tub. It's pretty tough to see, but the water's murky and there's a thin coating, a thin film, if you will, that's greenish, yellowish on the weights. If you've been reading up on oxalic acid, you might read about like a dreaded green haze. Don't worry, that's not what that is. The dreaded green haze people talk about is if you don't scrub them every six, eight, 10 hours and the green haze that you see doesn't come off. That is quite normal, that yellowish, kind of whitish haze. And you'll see that that scrubs off and that from this point on, your water's not gonna be as clear. It's going to be a little murky from that sediment kind of swirling around every time you disturb it. Now let's do some scrubbing. When you reach in, try not to get your gloves pinched between two weights or you might rip them open. This is one of the 25 pound buns. This is smearing to the point that I can see success in removing the rust. 
but I'll probably put it back in for one more round. Next up, we have one of the 20s. So at least on the handle, it looks like this 20 doesn't have any of the original paint left. One other tip, as you go weight to weight, some of that orangish, rusty smear buildup will happen on your brush. Don't let that affect the assessment of your next one. So I'm transferring a little bit of that onto here, but if I rinse it off, this is an example of one that after one round, this is ready to come out of the bath. So I'm gonna set it aside and I'll show you in a minute after I scrub the rest, what I'm gonna do with it. So I'm keeping the ones that go back in the bath on the lid and I'm putting the other ones that are ready to come out of the bath over on the side. Oh boy. Yeah. So this is the 40 bun. Hey, try not to mistake casting marks for rust and then scrub too hard. There's some machining sometimes. There's some casting flaws sometimes. Don't unduly scrub and take off the original paint. That's supposed to be there, it's just the iron. So lots of progress here, but going back in the bath. Here's the other 25. I'm gonna rinse my brush off a little from that rusty 40. This is an example of one that probably could come out of the bath or go back in, either one. I usually err on the side of putting it back in. Some people fear like, wait, if I leave it in too long, is it gonna take off the original paint? It takes days, if not weeks, to get to that point. We're only on the first round, so I have no fear of stripping the original paint, so I'm gonna put this one back in. the other 20 I can already tell it's ready to come out and the Marcy 5 if you just look at this you can see before I even scrub there's a lot of progress in just one round the edges though still need some attention doesn't look like much original paint left but I'm taking off the rust and then I'll probably just oil it. Okay, so now, here's why I like to do it on the lid. I put the ones going back in the bath, back into the bath. Try not to pinch your gloves. And I put the ones that are coming out of the bath separate because now I can pick up the lid. It might seem weird putting this rusty water back in the bath, but honestly, it's just convenient for me because I don't want to open the garage door. When the weather's nice and the garage door is open, I dump that outside. Okay, what do we do now? Well, now I'm gonna set my lid over here to dry and I'm going to get my baking soda solution one tablespoon baking soda for a 32 ounce spray bottle. If you do more than that, you're going to end up clogging the spray bottle. I find that spraying like that is a lot quicker and more efficient than setting up a whole separate dunk bin of baking soda solution. All right, ladies and gents, see you in eight to 10 hours. I gave them a scrub for the first time this morning. Here I am, late afternoon, early evening, for the second scrubbing of them. Hopefully a couple more besides for these 20 pound buns will be ready to come out. Now, you might notice that I didn't dry these. I just let them air dry and they picked up, air dry, <laughs> and they picked up this chalky, sort of white film. That's just the baking soda solution drying on there. 
Don't be worried by that. It's completely normal. And you'll be amazed at the magical powers of 3-in-1 oil whenever you apply it soon enough. So we'll set these aside. And I'll get on my personal protection equipment, my safety gear. We'll do some scrubbing. Let's see what we find. All right. The Marcy plate is looking about as good as it's going to get. There's just maybe like a little rust spot there. So we'll scrub it with the nylon first. Looks like not much original paint left. So that's the type of thing you find out after you take the rust off a lot of times. Now, since there's not much original paint left and it's just this tiny little speck of rust here that's still persisting, that's where brass brush will come out. Because, I mean, really, if there's not that much original paint left, why am I scared to use a brass brush? I shouldn't be. And notice I like to kind of rinse it off some so you can really tell what you got. All right. Here's our 40 pound bun. Still some really persistent rust on there. This is the point after two rounds that I do start using a brass brush on the persistent rust. I'll still scrub it with nylon first and then rinse it so that I have a clear picture of what rust is still really there. And keep in mind, you wanna let the brush do the work for you. Don't push down too hard, especially on a better quality brush like this Forney you're going to find that you just bend the bristles. And when you're pushing too hard, you're going to take off the original paint. So let the brass brush do its job and just gently kind of go over the persistent rust at this point, if you have to. So nylon first. Now the nylon has smeared the rust everywhere, so that's where I like to rinse it. And that way, you have a good gauge of where to scrub with the wire brush for the persistent rust. And you see how I'm not pushing down that hard. I'm just giving it a little scrub This guy's looking pretty good. 25 pound bun. There's still little pockets of rust that happen sometimes with certain castings. So, gentle wire. And you'll see that I'm not taking any of that black original paint off with this wire brush. Just nice and gentle. It sort of reminds me of back when I was in the military, polishing boots. You know, just kind of buffing your boot. Because I'm so old that back then you did shine your boots in the military. I suppose the newer boots, they don't shine them. Uh. Looks like all that boot shining has paid off. Now I can scrub rust from a dumbbell. Now I should mention, I'm not so worried because these are rounded and I'm setting them down, but 
be careful, especially a big 45 pound plate. When you put it back into your plastic bin, I have put it back at an angle and cracked the bin, causing all of the oxalic acid solution to spill out. So be careful putting them back in. Don't drop your plates on your plastic bin. Okay. Oh, almost forgot about our little five pounder. So now, baking soda solution. I'm gonna let this dry just like I did with those 20 pound buns. This is where timing gets a little tricky. I think, all right, I'll probably go to bed in what? Four or five hours? How am I gonna scrub in eight to 10 hours? Do I have to set an alarm and get up at like one in the morning to scrub these things? No. Here's what I do. I do a quick scrub, meaning that I don't even pull them all the way out of there later in the evening, just to kind of reset that clock, if you will, eight to 10 hours until the next morning. Just a quick pick it up, give it a once over, put it back in. And that's just to prevent that green haze from locking in. I won't put that on this video because as you saw, it's really not that thrilling, but just rest assured between now and the next time you see me on the video, I will have done a quick scrub like that before heading off to bed. See you in the morning. As I mentioned earlier, it's winter here in Pittsburgh and in my garage, I live in an old house. It's pretty cold, like 50, 55, even colder. So I've gotten questions and I've seen discussion on how cold is too cold for oxalic acid. In my experience, as you can see, it's working. But what I've noticed is that it will work a little slower in the cold. So that's really all you need to be concerned with. If the water's freezing, eh, then you have a problem. So <laughs> you might have a problem bigger than just the oxalic acid if it's freezing in your garage. And it's an attached garage. So let's see how we did overnight. All right. 25 bun, ready for baking soda. So some definite progress on the 40 pound bun, but still some rust that's persisting. I'll do the brass wire brush, put it in for another round. My attitude with the brass wire brush as well is that if I happen to remove the original paint in a couple little spots, retaining 90% of the original paint is still better than nothing. And the other bun, 25 pound bun, is ready for baking soda as well. I don't think I mentioned before, the whole purpose for the baking soda is that you're using an acid, oxalic acid, and the baking soda is going to neutralize that acid so that it doesn't continue to eat away at things. I don't know how detrimental that might be, but it's a pretty easy thing to just squirt it down. I'll give the 40 pound bun one more round. And if that rust doesn't come off, then we may need to use some more aggressive efforts. All right, we're back in action here. Let's see how our 40 pound bun is doing. Because this is about my cutoff. What I mean by that is we're now on our fourth scrubbing. If you don't count that little maintenance scrub before bed last night, so that means that it's had four soaks, four eight to 10 hour periods of time to soak an oxalic acid bath. And that also means it's coming to the end of the weekend. So in addition to diminishing returns and not really making much progress after this point, the other reason to move on and find other ways to take off remaining persistent rust, which I'll show you in a second, most likely, <laughs> is that it's the end of the weekend. We got to wrap up this project. Now, before I even scrub, it looks like that rust is still there. 
just the spots. You can see that compared to where we started, this is excellent. This is like I was describing, 90% original paint. We've just got a couple little spots, maybe the size of a quarter over on this end and even smaller spots on the other end. So first, we'll give it a try with the brass brush. So even after that wire brush, it's looking like some spots remain. So what do we do about that? Well, first, let's hit it with some baking soda spray, baking soda solution, and then I'll show you a couple options. And actually, I should mention that I like to let things air dry. I just save time wherever I can, rather than drying it with a towel. However, if it's my very last weight that's coming out of the bath, in this scenario, you know, maybe I'll try it off with a towel. And anytime you're in a rush, if you really want to just proceed to the next step, you can just dry them with a towel. That's fine. So the three ways that you can now just hit those tiny little parts of persistent rust that's left so that you end up with a large majority, like 90 to 95% original paint, and maybe there's a little bit of bare iron that eventually will form a patina, would be to use a navel jelly rust dissolver, such as this, so that you don't coat the whole thing. You just put that rust dissolver on those little rusted spots. Sometimes this will take the paint off, sometimes it won't. I haven't had any consistent luck with it, future video coming up with this navel jelly, so make sure you subscribe. The other thing you can do, and what I think I'll try with this, since I still have a little time tonight when I oil these, will be to really coat it with some oil on those rusted spots and let it sit, because 3-in-1 oil, in addition to protecting, can also take off some rust. So I'll give that a shot before I go to the navel jelly and use a little bit of the wire brush with the oil. The last option, if you just want to get down and dirty and get the business, would be to use a wire wheel. This is a very cheap one. This is not the type of wire wheel I would suggest for barbells or even for any other kind of delicate work. I'd suggest Forney wire wheels, the same brand that I use the wire brush from for any kind of delicate work or for your barbells. The reason I'm using this cheap one is, first of all, I have them left over from back when I didn't know about Forney wire wheels that are much better quality, and because when it comes to just knocking off some rust, these things will just chew through it. So you need a drill or an angle grinder. You can buy them for angle grinders as well. I buy them with the drill bit, and they are super cheap. You get a whole big box of them. So you can try this. This is, for me, since I have the time tonight, kind of the last resort. Now we've come to one of my favorite parts of this whole process. We're going to take these chalky, seemingly not really restored weights, hit them with some 3-in-1 oil, and it's like magic. This will take off all of that baking soda chalky residue. You might have noticed a little bit of kind of rusty baking soda, solution water, dried on there. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's still rust. It just means that solution had a little bit of that orangish color to it. So what I'm getting at is, don't be afraid. You're about to see something cool. You need three-in-one oil. You need something on your floor so you're not getting oil all over the place. I have cardboard down for this project because it's a smaller project. You can use a thicker plastic, like the four millimeter Frost King plastic that I use with barbell restorations, if you'd like. I suggest that you put this up if you're going to do a larger project or if you're near anything else, hang it as a backdrop so that you don't splash oil, especially when the bristles of the brush kind of fling off of the plate. Oil does splatter places if you're not careful. I have a link for this particular plastic sheeting in 
the description, or you can just pick up whatever, a plastic drop cloth at the hardware store. Speaking of hardware stores, I don't have a link for these gloves. I'll see if I can find one. But I buy these in like a five pack at the hardware store, and I like these for anything that I'm not submerging my hand into the bin, meaning three-in-one oil most times. I also use these orange gloves. I keep a pair in my car for weight pickups and handling rusty weights and things so I don't get the rust all over my hands. Gotta keep these pretty little hands looking good. And we need our brushes. The Forney scratch brush, brass wire scratch brush. Don't get confused and buy the stainless one. And your nylon brush, the one that maybe you didn't use for the oxalic acid, or if you did, then just kind of rinse it off. You'll be fine. You can use the same brush for this. Now, plates are a little easier than dumbbells when it comes to oiling. You know, I hit about half the plate with the oil. Dumbbells, it's going to run down the sides. But I do a couple, and then I scrub. And you can always add more. Oh man, wait a minute. I need my gloves. There we go. Depending on the weight, you'll be able to tell right away whether it needs more oil or not that it's just really soaking it up, or you didn't apply enough. Look at this. I mean, it's shiny, and then you'll see spots that you missed scrubbing that aren't shiny. But you can see already, look how gorgeous that is. It's not going to be this shiny once we wipe the oil off. But this used to be fairly rusty. And this black that you see is the original paint. Now, I don't see anything that needs the wire brush for these. So I'm going to roll them over here. And I'm leaving the 40 pounder for last. We'll hit the 20s now. Oh man, look at these. You really get a sense of why these were nicknamed buns. Because I mean, this looks like a bun. It looks like I should put like a hamburger patty in there. I'm fairly certain that the handles are steel, the heads are cast iron. You can see that this is just bare, there's not much original paint left. Parts of the cast iron heads as well on these 20 pounders are fairly bare as compared to the 25s I just showed you. There's some remnants of like a paint splatter from a previous owner. I don't mind that, but if you really want to take that off, you could take a wire brush to that. You could scrape it with a razor if it's small enough. Paint specs, things like that, I just pop off with a razor, but I'll just keep it on there. I think it gives it a little character. You'll notice as I do this that I'm not reapplying oil. That's because the brush actually retains quite a bit of oil for these touch-up moments. Now all of these I've just used a nylon brush on. I haven't really needed any of the wire brush action. These I'll just let sit for probably about 24 hours at least until I come back and I wipe them down. This one though, let's see what happens. So this is where we stand. It had some definite rust spots here and here, I can see. But we'll just do what we did with the rest with nylon and then break out the wire brush.
I'm adding some extra three in one oil to where those kind of rust spots were to really make sure I get a nice amount sitting in there. And then if we look at this, it doesn't look bad. I mean, if I asked you to point out where those rust spots were, you'd be pretty hard pressed to do so. However, don't be fooled. Give it a sec. We knew they were on there prior to the three in one. So what I'm going to do is come back a little later tonight to check on this 40 and possibly scrub with the wire brush. If I see those rust spots are still there. The 20s, 25s, and that Marcy plate, they're good to go. I'm going to leave those alone for 24 hours and then come back to do the first wipe down. I said first wipe down for a reason. That's coming up. Oh, one last thing. I should mention that kind of like after the baking soda spray, once you apply three in one, it is relatively flexible. If I was busy later tonight, if I was busy tomorrow, you could let this sit for days, even weeks and then wipe them down. And you might not even have to wipe them down too much if you let them sit for a while. So you are at a flexible scheduling point. All right, we're back. It's been a day, time to wipe these down. I'm doing this basement Brandon style with my Rode mic just clipped on my shirt since apparently that high pitched buzzing, I don't know if you picked up on that in the last clip or two, was from the lavalier. Ugh. We'll get the hang of this sooner or later. In the meantime, let's clean up some weights, right? Nothing really scientific about wiping down the weights. I mean, wear safety gloves, use a microfiber cloth. It will save you time. It's worth a couple bucks. However, what you need to be aware of is that as you're wiping them down, if you do spot some rust, it's okay to hit a spot with the wire brush and reapply oil. It's not like, you know, this game is over as soon as you wipe it down. You'll notice the cloth getting really dirty. I think that's more to do with the dirty water that then dried on here with the oil sometimes. Other times it might just be that the oil is penetrating and you are wiping off a little more dirt and grime and rust. I kind of doubt it though after soaking for so long. Either way, you end up getting most of the oil off this first wipe down. Now I say most, give you a closer look at that, because I tend to find that a couple days later, there is a little bit of residue. Like if it's a weight plate and I hang it up in the gym, I'll see a little shininess on the bottom from it coming down. So it doesn't hurt to, if you're not in too much of a rush, leave these sit for a couple more days and give them a second wipe down. That's what I do. Unless I'm super excited to get something into the gym. Like for example, these 20 pound buns, I kind of need them. I'm trying to do some lateral raises. So I'll bring them in the gym, but I like to keep one of these cloths in my home gym just in case I take a look and I think, oh, geez, that thing's looking shiny. It's pretty oily. But I'm really happy with the way these turned out. These 20 pound buns that don't have too much original paint left, they have a nice patina to the cast iron heads with a little bit of original paint and then the steel handles have a cool weathered look to them if this old school look isn't for you you could at this point decide to paint and that's fine i have some videos on how to paint weights check them out like subscribe comment all that happy stuff but this is the old school look i like just one more here to take a look at. Well, maybe two. We'll look at the 40 bun too. This one, the 25 pounders, they do have a nice amount of paint left on them. And they're looking pretty good. 
I'm particularly happy with the way these turned out. Big thanks to the fellow collector that let me buy these off of them. Make friends with your other collectors, and as they find different preferences and things, for weights, they might let go of what they used to like. And you can get it. And then, probably the rustiest of the dumbbells was this 40 pounder. And it is looking great. It does have right here if you take a look in there that rusty spot is now pretty much bare iron but overall that's pretty good. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks for cleaning up your weights. If you know any tips and tricks, please drop a comment and let me know. I'm always learning. This isn't like, you know, the one way to go about things. Please, share your knowledge. I'll keep sharing my knowledge. And together, we're going to clean up these old weights. You know why? Old weights, new gains. Thanks for watching, everybody.